Here we simulate a head-on engagement where the target can accelerate, or the target performs an evasive maneuver. Here's our inertial frame, target, pursuer, initially on a collision course, but the target, starting from the initial time, accelerates with some AT value. The pursuer therefore has to accelerate in order to maintain a collision course. In this engagement, N is set to three, heading error is initially zero, target acceleration is twice that of gravity, VP is three times VT. They're at the same altitude and their initial separation is 30,000 feet. We'll look at both pure and true proportional navigation. First, true pronav. And for all simulations shown in this module, unless otherwise noted, integration was performed with fourth order Rungakutta with a time step size of one one thousandth of a second. Here's the trajectories from the simulation. Notice the pursuer changing its course in an attempt to enforce a collision triangle. Following the pursuer along its trajectory, we see the acceleration command in black perpendicular to the line of sight direction in the dashed black line, and also the pursuer velocity vector leading increasingly in time as it attempts to establish collision. And just moments before collision, we see the relative spacing between the range vectors is constant, and the lead angle of the pursuer is also not changing, indicating that a collision triangle has been achieved. So the trajectory once again, with the collision triangle shown just before collision, the acceleration profile of the pursuer starts with zero acceleration because the pursuer and target are initially on a collision course, then the target accelerates, so the pursuer must accelerate in order to reestablish the collision course. The pursuer reaches a maximum acceleration of about four and a half Gs, or just over twice the target acceleration. And then we finally ask, what is behind the form of this acceleration curve? We have two inputs to proportional navigation, closing velocity and line of sight rate. So on the left hand side is line of sight rate, on the right hand side is closing velocity. Now what we can see is that closing velocity is roughly 4,000 throughout the engagement. Multiplied by the navigation gain of three, that's a factor of 12,000 that multiplies lambda dot. And lambda dot ranges from zero to just over 0.7 degrees per second. So the form of true pronav is really dictated by the form of lambda dot. And if we switch back to the acceleration profile, we can see the consistency in form. Finally, another important metric of merit is missed distance. Missed distance comes from the minimum range achieved throughout the engagement. In our simulation, we have range at a series of points in time. So we determine the miss as the minimum of the range in that series. Plotting range versus time, for this engagement we see a clear minimum of 1.4 feet. But theoretically we know that miss is zero. The reason why we don't get zero is that our simulation has not fully resolved that singularity we can decrease the time step size below one one thousandth of a second to better resolve the missed distance. Now pure proportional navigation. The trajectories look similar. Following the pursuer along its trajectory, we see the distinguishing factor of pure pronav where the acceleration in black is perpendicular to the blue velocity vector. And then just moments before collision, the spacing between the range vectors is constant and the lead angle of the pursuer is not changing, indicating a collision triangle. The trajectory, again shown on the left, the pursuer acceleration command shown on the right, initially zero acceleration, 
The target accelerates. The pursuer therefore has to accelerate for collision. We see a monotonically increasing acceleration command up to a maximum acceleration required of just four times the acceleration of the target. Plotting range versus time, we get 0.15 feet miss or about two inches. Before proceeding, check your understanding by reading these statements and inserting the correct word or phrase to complete them. Here are the trajectories for four different values of n for true pronav. We can see that the highest value of n gives the tightest turn radius and the shortest distance traveled to the target. On the right hand side is the acceleration commanded by the true pronav law. We've already looked at the case for n equals 3. For n equals 4 and 5, the acceleration late on in the engagement decreases, but early on a slightly larger acceleration is required. Essentially, as n increases, it tends to obtain a collision triangle earlier as we saw in section 2, and because of that increased control effort to obtain the collision triangle, you have to do less work to maintain it later, which results in lesser values of the acceleration command. For n equals 2, the acceleration command diverges. This is not due to the singularity in lambda dot or vc. This is an instability in the true pronav law. We'll further explore this when we linearize the true pronav. Looking at the inputs to the pronav, closing velocity remains at about 4,000, while line of sight rate is the curve that's responsible for the form of the true pronav command. Just as acceleration diverges for n equals 2, so does it diverge for line of sight rate. Comparing true to pure in terms of trajectories, they're almost identical. The acceleration profiles also have similarities. One difference can be seen for n equals 3. For true pronav, the acceleration command is curved down, while for pure, it's curved up. In summary, both true and pure pronav are effective against accelerating targets. Now to check your understanding on this module so far, pause the video, read the phrases, and insert the correct word or statement in the blank spaces. Let's dig more into control effort over the entire course of the engagement. Here's a plot of control effort versus navigation gain for the accelerating target case. Both pure and true pronav are shown, and what we can see is a clear monotonic decrease of control effort as navigation gain increases. And note the vertical axis is on a log scale. This is different than what we got in the previous module. An optimum apparently does not exist for the case of an accelerating target for these forms of pronav, but it does for the case of negative 20 degrees heading error. For true pronav, that optimum was at 3. And for pure pronav, the optimum was at 4. Let's look at these cases in a little more detail, starting with the heading error case. We want to understand how significant these optimal values of n are. Notice that after a navigation gain of 3, there is a very shallow slope in this curve as n increases. So is the amount of control effort expended for larger n actually significant? Zooming in, we can clearly see now the optimal values on the pure and true pronav lines. Now plotting this on a linear scale and normalizing each curve by its respective optimal value of n, we can see the factor increase beyond the optimal value. If n is between 3 and 5, the control effort is within 20% of its optimal value for both pure and true pronav. For pure pronav, beyond a value of 5, 
at six, we only have about 10, 15% more control effort. And at seven, about 20%. For true, for n equals six, 30% more effort. And for n equals seven, 50% more effort. So the control effort over the course of the engagement can be significantly greater for pure or true pronav as n increases. And now the case of the accelerating target, zooming in for navigation gain three or greater, we start to see the drop off in control effort as n increases. Plotting on a linear scale and normalizing by the optimal values for the heading error case, we clearly see substantially less control effort as n increases for both pure and true. So for an accelerating target, these forms of pronav apparently do not have an optimal n that exists. But for the case of heading error, an optimal n does exist. In future modules, we'll get more into the details of selecting the correct n for a system. But for now, pause the video and check your understanding by filling in each statement with the correct word or phrase. This is simulation of engagements with proportional navigation, head-on engagement with target acceleration, missile guidance fundamentals, section three, module four.